to Irtika Conversation. My name is Salman Hamid, and I am uh, delighted uh, to have with me here Dr. Stefan Blanc. And uh, he is in the Department of Philosophy and Moral Sciences at Ghent University, uh, Belgium. And uh, we've had a chance to work on um, another project, which is actually a little bit related to this uh, paper that we're going to talk about. But here in particular, I wanted to talk to Dr. Blanc about uh, creationism in Europe, Fact, Gaps, and Prospects, a new paper with three co-authors which just came out in the Journal of the American Academy of Religion. Welcome, Stefan. Thank you. Uh, so let's start by, if you can just say in uh, a few sentences, what is the central point of your paper? And, and in some sense, hey, why should we care about this paper? Okay, I'll uh, do my best uh, to convince you of the, <laughs> of the paper. Um, well, it's, we started writing the paper because we saw that there was an increasing number of um, articles, not only in academic journals, but also in newspapers and things like that, um, about creationism in Europe. So and it has become clear, um, Ronald Numbers, for instance, the historian Ronald Numbers, has pointed out that um, creationism, hey, creationism is no longer, or has never been, maybe, uh, an exclusively American phenomenon. Um, we see it popping up everywhere, including in Europe. And indeed, that, that's what we saw. We saw more and more incidents being described um, of creationists trying to realize some uh, goals in, in Europe as well, so no longer only in the United States. Um, and we thought, well, it might be a good idea to put all that material together and see what we have already and then try to uh, point out some gaps that we can establish um, and maybe give some indications on how not only the, the study of creationism can um, develop in the future, but also how creationism might develop in the future, given the, the different countries with the different uh, cultural context, qua religion, economics, and politics. So yeah, that was that's the main, um, how should I say, the main starting point of, of the paper. Um, so we we showed, of course, creationism is not as big as in the United States, but we did show, I think, we did demonstrate, we do demonstrate with the paper, there is considerable um, creation. There are considerable creationist activities in Europe, and in some countries, uh, creationism is quite big, such as in Russia or in. Um, in Germany, it's quite strong organization and things like that. So, uh, yeah, that's the main point of our article. Okay, and so uh, you mentioned a bit of comparison between um, uh, the U.S., where creationism has had a longer history, uh, with uh, with the European case. Uh, how do you differentiate? I mean, I mean, do you find significant differences, or is it more sort of like? the same creationism coming from the U.S. but taking a slightly different form? What we see is that we have different kinds of creationism in Europe. Um, one form is American-like, American-style creationism, which is important and imported actively by American creationists who actually try to make their own organizations such as Answers in Genesis and develop like this European hubs for these organizations and sometimes depending on which country that they find themselves in they, they're quite successful um, what we also see is that particular uh, elements from American creationism is being adopted by European conservative religious people um, and then kind of integrated into their own belief system and then there's maybe I could call it a third version, mm -hmm. which you could say it's a kind of local form of creationism, which is actually kind of creationism which has nothing or little to do with American creationism, wow. but it actually um, comes from religious groups, uh, European religious groups from within themselves, with their own kind of arguments. Mm -hmm. uh, often they're more religious, for instance, uh, than, than the scientific-like forms of creationism that you, that you have in, in the United States. So, because we have no First Amendment that right. creationists have to, to deal with, so they can rely more on religious uh, arguments and their beliefs, and they don't feel the need to uh, justify them or to um, embellish them, re embellish them as uh, scientific beliefs. Right? So. Are there any countries in Europe where there is something like the First Amendment uh, or 
it's not in any country in 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 Europe. Do you think? I mean, where? So I'm just trying to think. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. In most countries, even um, for instance, religious education is is funded by the state. Right. Right. So, the, uh, for for instance, in Belgium, which is a highly secular culture, uh, which has a highly secular culture, um, education is mostly organized by the Catholics. Mm -hmm. And within these schools, they teach about the Bible and about Jesus. So they have this religious class, but of course, it's not nothing fundamentalist uh, about these classes. But it is being funded by the state. Um, I, I think it's, it's the same in, in uh, the Netherlands, um, where actually schools are free to teach creationism, but of course, they have to uh, also teach about evolutionary theory mm -hmm. because they have to follow the standards set by the national government. Mm -hmm. Um, but they, but then again, they are free to teach about creationism, and these th these schools are being funded by the by the state. So it's completely different. Um, how should I say, the political mm. setting in which creationism uh, can function than in the United States. Now, uh, uh, related to that, I mean, do you think uh, there is a distinct different kinds of creationisms with Protestant and Catholic? within Europe because okay so you have the state sponsoring schools religious schools and things like that I'm just mm -hmm. wondering if there is a because the US creationism is uh, is predominantly young earth creationists oftentimes related to the evangelical groups uh, how is it right. in Europe do we see sort of like more or less similar things between Catholics and Protestants or is it uh, how does it get divided especially in places like Belgium Netherlands uh, France for example mm -hmm. right well, uh, what we see is that um, in most Catholic, uh, predominantly Catholic countries, uh, like in Belgium or France, but these are very secular countries as well. So it's it's sometimes difficult to call them Catholic countries because right. even even at these Catholic schools, Catholicism is not like this really rigid Orthodox form of Catholicism. Mm -hmm. Even within the religious class, it's it's a very liberal approach to religion. Mm -hmm. So. Um, um, so there's little creationism there, and for, but um, in the Netherlands, for instance, mm -hmm. where, where there is a, a large Protestant group, there is a, a minority of fundamentalists. There is even a Bible Belt in the, in the Netherlands, um, and these are quite these people adhere to a quite strict young Earth uh, version of, of creationism. But then again, for instance, in in Russia, we have an Orthodox version of right. of, uh, of creationism. So and these. Yeah, the age of the earth is not always that important. It's more about a, a reaction to more liberal uh, tendencies within the church itself or against um, things that they see, uh, that, that they uh, think go wrong in a secular or in the Western society. Right? So these are yes, conservative religious people with very conservative moral standards and these often conflict with how things are going in a Western society, right? So. So, so do you think uh, th these groups co have collaborated? Do you know, like, sort of, like, say, for example, uh, the Orthodox Church in uh, Russia, and say, for example, uh, Protestant groups in Belgium, have they? Do you know if they work together, or is it totally on local aspects, local workings? Um, do you have any information about that? Um, most of it is local. Okay. Um, there's not a lot of international. Uh, collaboration going on. Uh, there are the European Creationist Conferences, which are being held, I think, every two years, but I think that's it. So that's and, a place and, where creationists meet. And, and those are uh, sort of like international conferences where different creationist groups from different religious yes. groups come in, or...? Um, I think most are Protestants. But I think, Protestants some Catholics, I think there are some Catholics involved as well. I need to check the details again, but... Uh, uh, people from Ger the people from Germany are involved, for instance, from the Western Western Gemeinschaft. Uh, Wissenschaft. What's, 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 I'm not. I'm not familiar. I'm not sure about the real name. Just Wort, Wort and Wissen. You know that? No, no. The I, student I group. This is Wort and Wissen student group. Okay. This is a very uh, large uh, organization. Oh, uh, not, not maybe not a large, but a very influential uh, creationist organization in Germany. Um, and these these are people are involved with these European conferences. Um, uh -huh. So that's that's I think the only international um, enterprise that they have. Uh, but okay. and another thing that might point to some exchange that they do is that the uh, book that has been uh, written by the two Germans, uh, Juncker, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I have to check the name, 
I forgot the name. Um, this is being translated into several European uh, several European languages. So uh, that's another thing that shows that they knew that they do know of of one another uh, that they exist. So, but. Of course, the situation is different than in the United States. We have these different kinds of languages. We have these different kinds of religious backgrounds. Um, so that might make communication more difficult mm -hmm. than, than in the United States, right? So, yeah. And I'm just curious, uh, is, uh, are Muslim creationists also part of this, uh, or they attend, uh, especially, I mean, I, mean, I, I don't want to overemphasize Harun Yahya, for example, and, and uh -huh. he does have an inf influence in uh, in Europe. I'm just curious, I mean, does his group also attend this International Creationist Conference, or they do their own thing? Uh, they do their own thing, They I do think. their own thing. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, so, uh, overall, what do you think, how serious is this problem of creation. I mean, do we, should we think of it as, well, it is really undermining biology education, or is it more like, well, it's a very important cultural phenomena that we have to understand, but as far as education and other things are concerned, it's not a serious threat, or, or it's just a marginal movement. How do you, how do you place these various creationist movements, obviously in different countries there are different factors mm -hmm. in it, mm -hmm. but overall what is your take on it and I would also like to hear your take regarding Belgium in particular because that's where you are located. Right, right. Well Belgium is not a very interesting country in that regard. Right. Um, there's only a very small creationist group of about 500 people which is called Creabel, so that's it. Um, what we do have occasionally is a um, um, how should I say it's uh, an authority figure within the Catholic Church that kind of talks intelligent design like uh, who, who says intelligent design like things um, so that's that's the only kind of creationism that we have of course for some very small uh, forms of creationism in um, schools uh, organized by Protestants uh, Orthodox Jews and, and some Muslim schools and, and also within the Steiner uh, schools, so uh, the anthroposophy mm -hmm. schools. Oh, right. yeah. But th these are very local uh, things, and um, we only know about them because sometimes a newspaper hits on a story about creationism being taught in one of these smaller schools. Um, but they can do that. There are no standards about teaching evolution in the in the elementary school. So right. it's only compulsory in Belgium evolutionary theory within the last two years of secondary school. And a secondary school, uh, just for comparison, so that is uh, 9th, 10th, or that is 11th, 12th? What grade is that? Um, so 17 to 18 years old. Okay, okay, so, so probably it's more high school from here. Yeah, okay. All right, so, 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 do you, so do you think this is a concern for education, or is this uh, a cultural phenomenon that is important, or do you think this is a sort of like a marginal uh, phenomenon? Right. In Belgium, um, it is a marginal phenomenon, just like, for instance, in France and some other countries, it's, it's very marginal, um, mainly within Catholic countries. Um, but then again, in the Netherlands, um, it's, it's uh, a belief within a minority group, but we're talking about here about 500,000 to 1 million people on a population of 16 to 70 million. So it is a small group, but it's a considerable number, and they have their own subculture, in, um, which, when, um, in which they can reside without much contact with the outside world or with, with uh, the main society. Uh, so it's a situation which is quite comparable or quite similar to, I think, uh, the situation in the United States, right? Where fundamentalists can create their own subculture. Mm. Um, and then I think in, in Russia, um, it's, it's even more important because there it's becoming very popular creationism within the Russian Orthodox Church, mm. which is still quite, quite influential on, on Russia uh, society. Mm. So, um, and there you can see that it might have some effect on political, political decisions that are being made about education, for instance. Mm. Uh, we know that there are some um, ministers of education, mostly, that have proposed, uh, that have made some propositions um, about uh, reducing the um, the amount the amount of evolutionary theory within within education, or at least balance it with uh, with some form of, of creationism or intelligent intelligent design like theory. Yeah. 
Uh, this uh, is in Russia? No, not in Russia. Oh, 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 this was see, in, in the Netherlands, in the and Netherlands, this was in, in one in Italy and in Serbia. So there have been several several proposals about uh, have been made about this, and it's uh, it's quite strange actually that these proposals are being done by ministers of education. So, <laughs> so it seems that they can gain maybe not gain power, but they at least creationists find a way to influence um, politics. Uh, right. So we need to be careful about that. It's, it's, I think we, it would be uh, unwise to say that it's only a marginal phenomenon. It, it is a small phenomenon, uh, especially when you compare it to the United States, but still at local levels or maybe at national levels, it's, it can find a way to influence politics. Concerning and, and, and in some sense, this is the point of your paper where it sort of like it looks at different places how it is playing a role within Europe and different places it's mapping out differently. Uh, within mm -hmm. that. Uh, right. Okay. Right. Yeah, well, it's very difficult to say that there is one creationism in right. Europe. Yes. Yeah, it's a, not, not to treat them as a monolithic entity. They are different. Yes, a, a European creationism it doesn't exist. So right. it's, it's we have creationism in Europe. It takes, it takes on these different kind of kinds of shapes. Uh, like I said, we have this this important creationism, important form of creationism. We have these local indigenous uh, forms of creationism. So, yeah. Great. Right. Well, uh, Stefan, thank you very much um, for, uh, for being with us and, and to talk about it. And, uh, and one more time, uh, the paper is Creationism in Europe, Facts, Gaps and Prospects. And it just uh, recently came out in the Journal of the American Academy of uh, Religion. And uh, well, say hi to your collaborators because uh, your co-authors in the paper. We are all good friends. So thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Sam. Bye.